So thanks to everybody for being here this morning. Um, appreciate you taking the time to talk about internships and intern 101. Um, I'm Kate Lee. I'm the Executive Director of Education and Workforce at the South Bend Regional Chamber. I am joined by Reagan Ward and Kyle Irwin, who I will have introduced themselves. Go Reagan. Yeah, so my name is Reagan Ward. I am the Education Workforce Coordinator and the YPN lead here at the Chamber. And I am Kyle Irwin. I am the Work-Based Learning Development Coordinator. I'm an in-focus fellow embedded here at the Chamber, and I'm also working with uh, South Bend Community School Corporation. So thank you guys for doing that. Um, um, just a brief, we're going to share a brief overview. There's a lot to know about internships in our community and the resources continue to grow. So we do this overview with the foundational pieces, but also what's new and happening out there. Um, trying to make it all, keep it all straight and make sure you're aware of all the resources. Um, this will be our 11th summer of Summer Connect, which we will review toward the end of our conversation today. But there are lots of other resources and we're continue to refine the intern programming um, and trying to engage our young people. Our goal is to ensure that we have the internships that students are looking for so they know that there's a place for them in our community post-graduation, give them great work experience, support businesses in the work that they're trying to get done, and also get the interns connected with each other and our community to increase that stickiness factor of them either staying here when they graduate, graduate or wanting to come back um, if they're away at school, wanting to come back and work here in our community, work and live here and be a part of our community. So real quick, and I'm going to make sure how many people are out there. Oh, I, can, I think I can see it. I am going to, I'll like call on people to introduce themselves so we don't have that weird, awkward thing where everybody's like going, uh, I don't know who's supposed to go next. So I'm just going to start um, in my corner and I have a Horvath. If you want to introduce yourself and give us just your name and your business, let us know if you've had interns before and what you want to learn, if anything, like what you're looking for. And maybe nobody's there or they can't unmute, but then I'll go to, is it yeah, if you can't, If you can't unmute real quick, everyone, you have to click the permission button for the recording. Is it Dacia? Uh, yes, Dacia, is, can you hear me? Yep, yep. Oh, perfect. All right, so, um, and Mel is actually, uh, she's on my team, so she may be having problems getting off of mute, but, uh, my name is Daisha Qualls. I'm the head of HR manufacturing for Hoosier Racing Tire. Um, we have had interns before, but we're really looking to get them uh, more integrated into the community. Um, I myself am, am fairly new to the South Bend area. Um, so just wanting to learn a little bit more about um, the options and, and how to get them more involved. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ross. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ross from the St. Joe County Public Library. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so I am the uh, staff development coordinator and volunteer coordinator for the library. Um, I'm new in this role, um, so I haven't actually managed any interns yet. That's why I'm here. Going to learn the 101, the good practices. Um, but our library has had interns for quite a few years now. Um, I'm just getting involved in my new role. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Jennifer. I'm uh, Jenny Kersen at Choice Light, um, your local nonprofit dark fiber provider. <laughs> um, <laughs> sounds very, I, uh, sounds very um, sneaky, like your local nonprofit dark fiber. <laughs> I'm not sneaky at all, but um, I'm the operations manager here, and I have had one intern. It was a really great experience. Got really lucky that he was an amazing um, employee for the time that we had him. Um, but it was my first, so kind of kind of new to it still. I'm kind of looking to learn anything and everything I can. Awesome! Thanks for being here, um, Tawana. All right, not for sure. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. All right. I am Tiwana Perry. I am with Purdue Polytechnic High School, and I am just here to learn more about the process myself. This is all new for our high school, so I wanted to jump on and just uh, get a feel for the process overall. 
Awesome. Thanks, Tawana. Erica? Hi, can you guys hear me? Yep. Perfect. Um, hi, I'm Erica Waltmeyer. I work with Daisha and Mel here at Hoosier Racing Tire. And like Daisha said, I'm here just looking to learn about more options and getting interns more involved to stay in the Indiana area. Awesome. I'm going to go back. I'm going to circle back to Mel since you mentioned Mel. See if there's opportunity to talk still yet. I understand technical. Oh, off mute. Yay. Hey, Mel. <laughs> hi. Uh, yeah, I'm Mel Horbath. I'm with Hoosier Racing Tire as well. And um, my team is on the call. And we have had some interns here um, at our facility. And we're just looking to find new ways and learn more about the process. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Alicia? Hi, everyone. My name is Alicia. I am the Regional Internship Program Manager for InFocus, as well as the South Bend Elkhart Regional Partnership. But I'm just here to kind of get the vibes. And if you guys have any trouble funding at all, I'd be happy to help with that as well. A wonderful partner in this work. Thanks for being here. Madel Madeline? Good morning. Um, I know you guys with the chamber. Um, I'm Madeline Martinak and I'm with Real Services. Um, we have had interns before, but we haven't had interns from you guys. Um, so just uh, looking forward to learning what you guys have going on this summer and how we can connect with your interns. Awesome. Thank you. Janelle? Um, Janelle Nijak. Um, I'm in the talent development coordinator here at First Source Bank. Um, we've have had interns before um, and I work on coordinating some of our events um, and helping kind of spread the word on some of that. I main coordinator and leader for our early career program. So just looking to see um, what else is happening out there that we can push some of our early career talent to do. Awesome. Thank you. Macy? Hi, I'm Macy Leathers. I'm a talent acquisition specialist at First Source Bank. Um, so I work with Janelle actually on our early career team. Um, we have had interns before and I um, kind of along with Janelle, I'm interested in learning, um, you know, the different programs and stuff that we can offer. Um, so yeah, thanks for having thanks us. Thanks for being here. On Jeanette. Hello, um, I am Anjana Dantzler. I am the Chief Financial Officer at the St. Joseph County Public Library. So Ross and I work together. Um, and um, yes, we had the library in general has had interns before and I had an intern last year. Um, and what I'd like to learn is how to be uh, work within this process and work with the interns better to give them a better experience. Awesome, thank you. I think it's, did I miss Adele? Dell might not be able to unmute. You hear me? Oh, there you go. Yeah. I'm a Dell Badget. I own Dell Start VR. Um, and I'm currently working with my development team and trying to um, you know, kind of maximize our our um our task load right now because we're developing software for education and training and stuff like that. And so I'm definitely looking to to find some interns that are interested in um uh VR development. Um I want to be able to kind of learn what's the the right um, avenues and 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 the expectations and and deliverables to use for to attract some some interns. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for being here. So we will jump right in. Um, appreciate all you taking the time. And I really um, I think having multiple people for one team is actually great because I think internships are a team sport. So the more people on your um, that are part of your business that are on board with the internship, the better the experience is, I think, for every intern that you have. So thanks for being here. So real briefly, the agenda, just a little bit about why internships are important, when do they take place, um, what can interns do where, that kind of thing. We're, we're, we'll go over, oops, and I did not mean to do that, but I did. Um, so just information, as you'll see on this agenda, the, very, the various things that we're going to talk about I uh, will go over those pretty quickly with plenty of time for questions and feel free to unmute and jump in with questions if you do have those, or you can just raise your hand if you're shy and you don't want to just jump in and start talking. So employer ROI, I just think this slide kind of, this, this messaging kind of just sets the tone. 
Um, and I, there were some new data. It had been a while since COVID. Things were a little wonky with surveys of employers and things like this. So I was interested to see, especially on this one from NACE, the perception of recruiting strategies, and this is employer responses, to say that internships, 80% of them said that was the highest return on investment. So you're in the right place to be thinking about how this works into your whole talent um, ecosystem and how you will find your talent and feed the need that you have for new jobs, emerging jobs, or even like to replace those who might be looking toward retirement. So appreciated seeing that information. 68.8% um, average job acceptance rate after people do an internship. So again, that reinforces the power of um, offering internships. And then the average cost per hire. Um, that's an interesting one because that's the average cost, but that's hard cost. And I read a lot about how like it's really hard to figure out how much it actually costs you to recruit somebody and how it also there. The data says that it can be up to three times the salary of some of these jobs, because particularly where we're having we're struggling to find engineers or different types of talent. It can be depending on type of job, it can cost even more to do the recruiting. So if you connect when they're in college, obviously you kind of get the early in with them and you won't have those the post-graduation recruitment costs because you'll already have that relationship. So it just changes things a little bit. And then the average cost for a summer intern, and this is based on eight weeks full-time at $15 an hour. Um, not every intern works full-time. Not every intern makes 15. Most make at least, um, I haven't seen anything below $10, but some, if they're specialty areas, particularly engineering, I know there are some interns that can make up to $25 an hour. So it just kind of depends on demand for the skill set, obviously your capacity, because smaller businesses don't have the same, necessarily the same budget for this kind of thing. But we're going to give you some tools to hopefully help you in that area. So be thinking too about how interns can help you. I mean, that's really, everybody should win in this scenario. The intern should get a great experience and you should get things done around your organization. So obviously you get things done. And I don't think we often think about how it can create a brand ambassador. Um, even if that intern, um, doesn't end up working for you, they're going to learn about you. And when they have a positive internship experience, they're going to be the one out in the community talking about it was a great opportunity, a great place to work. Everybody should go check it out. This is what we have. And just, especially among their peers, letting young people in our community know about what you offer and what you do behind those walls. Because I think there's even children who have grown up here, they don't necessarily know what goes on at Who's Retired. They don't know, so there are people who haven't ever been in the library. I know it's shocking, but it's true. Um, and what, what does real services do, right? First source is a bank. What do you do at a bank? So to be able to learn that from their peers, I think is really important. So the brand ambassadors, also a great way to increase diversity, um, to learn, to connect with students. There are, it's gonna be, this can be a really important part of your DEI strategy to be really thoughtful in your hiring of interns, um, especially in jobs that have traditionally not been diverse. To, to really focus on that. Gain fresh perspectives. We all, no matter what age we are, have a different perspective and being able to hear from um, the young, your potential future customers, maybe your current customers about what it looks like from their perspective can be really important. And then just identifying and building talent, obviously that's the core. If you can get them connected and you find they're a good fit for your culture and they have a great skill set, you can not only leverage their skill set during their internship, but as they're going back to school, as you're coaching them, they may have, they may come after their sophomore year, maybe between their junior and senior year. And they're thinking about what classes they need to take to make sure they're really ready to hit the ground running when they start their job. You can advise them on those kinds of things or other people that you work with who are in the jobs they'd like to be in. They can learn about their education pathway and learn from their experience, like what's really was helpful to take as a, as a course that they see themselves using still in their work. Um, and also developing managers. So if you have a young person on your team who you see management potential in, but maybe potentially has not um, ever managed another human, and you'd like to kind of let them try it out, trying out on an intern is a great way to do it. Obviously, they need some mentoring as well, but it then becomes a two-tier educational opportunity where you can um, help that young aspiring leader and manager learn how to manage better. And so you're kind of doing two things at once. And even if they're not the direct manager, possibly looping in that person, that young person with management potential as some type of a mentor for the intern is another opportunity. 
the intern ROI, because obviously, as I said, we want this to be a win for everybody um, who is part of the internship program. So for the intern, they build these durable and job specific skills, um, which is a great opportunity for them. They get to gain an understanding of an industry. We um, talked about this in our earlier live session. So if you do your internship at a hospital, let's say you're doing it in the hospital and you're in a finance department, um, you might have thought that the only thing at a hospital was doctors and nurses. I mean, we grow up not, we only know what we know. But as you do your internship and as you set up your internships, thinking about exposing students to all the different kinds of jobs that are offered within your company, because although that might not be the kind of job they're going to be looking for, they have friends who are also going to be looking for jobs. And for them to be able to say, you know, um, do you know they need people um, to lots of people in IT in every organization. And I think people don't necessarily students may not be thinking, oh, I'm an IT major. I work for an IT company. No, you can work for a bank. You can work for a hospital. You can work for the library. IT is everywhere. And talk, being able to talk about those jobs to the interns or that intern might be trying out an intern in one department and find out about another department or a role where they could work and make a little bit of a pivot, which you can still adjust on that while you're in college. And maybe they end up taking two or three different classes and shift just a little bit or maybe even move into a whole different direction because they find their real passion because you've introduced them to jobs that they didn't even know existed. So this is a great opportunity to that as well. Also, um, putting their coursework in context because so many of these students have already had a lot of college coursework. And this lets them see how it actually is applicable in the real world, which hopefully makes them, as they go forward in their classes, be thinking about how everything they're learning applies in the real world. We've all had those classes, I'm just guessing, maybe it was just me, who are like, I don't understand why I'm ever gonna use this again. I might still feel that way about some of my math classes, but that's because I was a journalism major. But I, I think knowing that they can see that, oh my gosh, these classes really do play out and the skills I'm learning really matter can make their next classes more meaningful to them because they kind of understand how it all connects. And then as we talked about discerning next steps in and after school, the classes and also where they might wanna work and what kind of career they might wanna pursue, they can meet not just their direct manager, but other people within the company and have aspirational goals um, that they may not have if they don't realize what's out there post-graduation. And it also helps them to build their network, professional and social. And we'll talk a little bit about Intern Summer Connect, which is a great way for all of our interns in the community to get to know each other. Um, knowing also that um, we do have uh, opportunities. We focus here on college interns, but high school work-based learning and internships are also emerging as something really strong and a way to get connected to students even earlier in their education pathway. So um, that's what Kyle's working on. And we'd be happy to talk to any of you about that. Has talked to a few of you already. And then you see this quote. So I, this is one of those things I find interesting. Um, the, we've had students, so this will be our 11th summer of Summer Connect programming. And the young people who grew up here, but just don't know much about the community, because you know, you kind of stay in your bubble. We've had young people who didn't even know the East Race was downtown. And then they wrap these race. They're like, I've got to bring my friends here. This is really cool. So we introduce students to things and suddenly they look at their community a little bit differently. And that's a really important part of, as they understand an employer and the community and meet other people, it's kind of the perfect ecosystem to get them engaged and have the thought of maybe, uh, maybe planning a future here. And of course, that's great for the community. I don't need to read through this list for you, but it benefits the community. Even if they don't come back to work for your organization, if they come back, they come back as a brand ambassador for you, as well as being a contributing member of our community, which is the goal of all of us here at the, so clearly the chamber is invested in this because we wanna see our population grow. We wanna see our members and employers have the talent that they need to succeed and grow. And so this is a positive change for all of us. And um, it's really, I always say, it's kind of like recruiting people to our community and growing them is a team sport and you're all part of that team. So when to do the um, internships? So summer is obviously a big time that this happens. I'm seeing there's things in the chat, so I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Moving things around on my screen. Okay, so um, how many of you, and you can unmute or drop it in the chat, um, typically just do summer internships 
Um, or have you done some that have been during the semester or over fall and winter breaks? Because we see summer as the, the big time, but uh, we are seeing particularly, and this is um, even more high school students, when they need their work-based learning for graduation, because it is part of Indiana requirements for some of the pathways that students are going through to have work-based learning that will be during the school year. So we're kind of seeing this expand out. Um, we can do all year internships. Yay, Madeline. Glad to hear that at Real Services. So um, just be thinking about where that can fit. Knowing too, and I, I've mentioned this before, the um, particularly for student athletes, we've noticed this at Notre Dame, they've reached out to the chamber and talked about if they can get a more condensed internship, maybe one over Christmas break, because depending on when your season is as an athlete, it can be really hard to do a summer internship or being more flexible with remote and that kind of thing. So just be thinking creatively about what that can look like. And for most of you, um, we find that we found the average is about eight weeks for an internship. Um, thumbs up, if you can find your thumb up uh, thing, if you are um, due about eight weeks is the average for your internships. Look at us, see if there's any thumbs coming. Does anybody, does anybody do any different length of time? Yeah, eight weeks is is typically what we see. So it's I just kind of like to reinforce that and see like what that's looking like. Um, and what can these internships be? So obviously short-term projects, you're not gonna give them a year long project of any kind, but short-term projects, um, but long-term could be like the kind of project that can last like throughout the whole eight week of their internship. So everybody looks at this differently. I recommend keeping like a list of all the things you know you need to do and almost like indicating to yourself which one could be done by an intern. Like what, could, how could we leverage an intern to get something done that's been on the list way too long? If you took the time to sit down with that intern for half a day and explain what you need to be done, give the foundational pieces or to write up like kind of almost the instructions of what needs to be done with some parameters so they get to be um, inside some guardrails, but also use their creativity. You'd be amazed at what interns can get done for you. So just be thinking about how if you took the the, the time to make a plan, put together the, the checklist and did a little bit of training, what somebody could really do for you. And I, it's, I think it's hard for all of us to stop, pause and put the plan in place. But I would recommend that's really just the thing to do. Um, to really make the internship a benefit for you as an employer and because you're getting things done and also for the student to give them ownership. Um, and I, I had that little piece about it's not about like making coffee, um, making copies and answering phones. But I also think it's really important to reinforce with the young talent that somebody has to do all those things. And some days we do those things. And that there's, I always say, every bit of my job doesn't bring me joy every moment that I'm doing it but there are a lot of things that have to be done to get to the really good work and making sure that um, the interns understand that I think is really important. And you don't want to dishearten them, I suppose, and think they never want to go to work because it's pure drudgery because it's not, but there are certain things that have to be done and we all kind of end up doing a lot of those things and just be prepared for that. Um, where obviously you can see from the group that's here, it can be all business sectors, for-profit, non-profit, um, on-site, or virtual or hybrid. How many of you are um, doing in person? I mean, even drop in the chat or I'm trying to think how to do this. No, just do a thumbs up again if you're strictly in person. Okay, and then how many are doing hybrid? So a little bit of everything. So I, I think that is like when I think about like the upside of COVID, I'm not sure internships would have ever been had. We've never would have had as many hybrid or virtual internships had that not happened. Uh, I still I think I'm old school. I still really like the idea of them having that team experience, especially young, early in their career. But if you can manage to do that in a hybrid setting I, and it makes it work for a student who otherwise would not have that internship, I think it's a great way to go. And kind of the how, and this goes back to thinking about short-term, long-term, um, the things on your to-do list. 
how do you do that? So as I mentioned project plans, um, giving the intern ownership wherever you can of the, the different pieces and parts of their project, um, structure and goals, management and mentoring. So I, I go back to thinking about a young person on your team who's like more of a near peer to that intern. If you can give them the opportunity to help with the management, but also allowing them to take on a role and basically assigning them the role of mentoring this young person, the intern, as, as somebody who's kind of been there more recently, to be a part of the team that's managing the intern, I think can also be really valuable. Um, obviously, providing a great work environment, showing them that um, work it can be all about, it's about team building and you can have fun while you're also getting good things done. And also giving them the tools they need to do their job. So when they walk in the door, making sure they have their computer, the resources, you take them on the walk around the office, they meet people. Um, when we do interns, we set up a little schedule where they get to meet with everybody or at least people or small groups of people to understand what's happening. What do people do at the chamber and visit South Bend and what are the jobs and how can they get engaged and other things they might be interested in. Take them to meetings so they can meet other people in the community, get them out there and really just be inclusive of them so they can really get the full picture of what you do, what the business does and learn how all the pieces and parts fit together. Because I think you can do all those things while also meeting the goals of getting your projects done. And then how do you connect with your interns? This, um, If you want to drop in the chat um, how you have connected with your interns, we do ask um, when the interns sign up for Summer Connect, we ask them how they connected with their internship. And um, this is um, for, we had 50% who did not tell us how they found their internship because we don't make it a requirement. But of the ones that replied, 30% said it was a personal connection or recommendation. So I think that's that really says something about how we connect, but that there are other ways as well. So career services and internship fairs, postings on the college website, um, the use of Handshake, which is one of the, uh, some of you have probably used this, the colleges use Handshake. It's really a, a platform that colleges can buy, but they're all kind of interconnected. So you can use Handshake um, through the colleges. Um, and then Work and Learn Indiana, which I'll go into a little bit more detail on. Um, we're always consistently trying to figure out how do we get, because there are so many places you can post. And we have a lot of employers who only post either on their own jobs board or they use Indeed. They use LinkedIn. There are so many different tools. So we're asking the people who are coming to this session if you would be willing to be part of an experiment and use a hashtag that we've used for our Summer Connect but never used encouraged using in like the job postings, but to use the hashtag intern SBR as you're posting your internships as, as something we can tell interns, like if you're looking for an internship, just know that if you're seeing hashtag intern SBR, these are employers who are involved with the, the summer programming or have been a part of one of the chamber events. Just a way, if a student's away at college, let's say they go to Ohio State, they wanna come home for the summer, it can be really challenging because their career services office may not have relationships here. And unless they know somebody personally or their parents or they have an adult in their life who can help them connect, it can be tricky to find your way back. So I think um, using the hashtag could be an interesting way. And we'll, and we're just, it's an experiment. And I said, this is the only way to do it, I think, is as an experiment and see if it works. And then we will let students know that that's one thing that they can look for. And we'll see how it works. I honestly, because we can never, we can't mandate that everybody post in one place. There's plenty of platforms, but finding their way to the intern. I have college students who are like, how do I even find one? And these are smart kids, but they, it just is a little overwhelming. And I think, you know, we all know the world can be a little overwhelming. And when you're finding your first internship, I think there can be extra challenges. Um, how did anybody post, I was looking to see if anybody dropped in the chat, like where they, um, post. Does anybody have any other ideas beyond those that I just rattled off there? All ideas are always welcome and I would add them and share them with anybody else. So onward to the Summer Connect program. So Summer Connect is our eight-week program of students getting together with each other through professional development and social networking. Um, and that's where we um, really 
try to get interns from across the spectrum working for multiple employers to connect with each other. They learn about the community. They get to meet each other. And hopefully they also get the kind of professional development that will help them do better in their internship, but also going forward in, um, in their college courses and in their time on campus. So last year's Summer Connect students, you can see this, we had 133 um, registered interns, 147 participants, and you're like, those numbers don't seem right. Well, they don't, but that's because not every intern that participates completes the entire form that we asked them to, to give us their information. We asked things like, um, what's your hometown? Um, what's your major? What's your expected graduation year? We're kind of trying to keep track of the interns that are kind of in our South Bend region ecosystem. Um, and this is one way that we can do this. We are, we feel like we've been working on this forever, but we are working on a kind of an alumni group um, for LinkedIn, where we are going to reach out to all the interns where we, whose LinkedIn profiles we know the link to and invite them to be a part of that as a place where we can hopefully loop some that didn't stay in the area back to our area with job postings, the ability to share things like that, but also just let them know what's going on and that we're still here and interested in them being connected to our community. Um, and hopefully some of those interns from 11 years ago are gonna one day be intern supervisors if they're not already. So it's kind of building that, um, making sure people stay connected with the idea of internships, whether as an intern or as a manager of an intern. So last summer we had, 49 employers, and the students represented 44 colleges and universities and four high schools. So you can see we have a real interesting diversity of where our students come from and also the majors. So there's um, a lot of that, and it's great to see the interns getting to know each other over the summer and getting more comfortable with each other. We do ask them to like introduce themselves. And you know there are kids who go to the same college who, of course, don't know each other, but they find each other through the intern program. Um, since 2014, we've had over 1,300 interns participate in the Summer Connect program, and they've worked with 163 different employers. So we feel those are really strong numbers and representing 33 of our Indiana colleges and universities. So there's only just a few Indiana colleges and universities that haven't been represented, 138 out of state and five international colleges and six high schools. So um, we keep building those numbers and are excited about that. One resource that um, I'm, I'm betting a lot of you have heard of, but not everyone, is Work and Learn Indiana. This was formerly indianaintern.net. And I, so I was thinking, when do I have to quit saying that? Because I think it's been two or three years now. So, um, But Work and Learn Indiana is a state-level platform sponsored by the Indiana Chamber. And this is a state-level intern posting site. You can post both college and high school internships out there. This is... Um, I say what's beautiful about a state level platform is that students who do go away to school um, or students who aren't from the state but go to college somewhere here can find their way to internships across the state, which is a little tricky. Like if you're in Bloomington and you came here from Nebraska for school, you might not ever think about an internship in South Bend. But if you're out looking around on Work and Learn Indiana and there's this great internship in South Bend, that might be the thing that brings a student who came here for to the state for college to a different part of Indiana for an internship. So there's something about that state level platform that if it's being well leveraged and robust, I think it's an opportunity to really make students see there's opportunities across the state, whether they're from here and looking to go somewhere else in the state, or they're going to school out of state and wanna find their way back in, or they've come here for school and wanna find something. So, um, I mean, like in South Bend region, of course we wanna trap all the college students who come here for college and like to keep them right here to do their internships. But knowing there may not always be a perfect fit, Work and Learn Indiana is a great tool for that. And we, we recommend for students to sign up on that and employers. Um, have any of you used Work and Learn Indiana? Can I get thumbs up on that? There's one, two, and I know, I know over the years, there have sometimes been challenges with it because staff changed, but I always recommend people to give it like another try um, and see if it can work better the next time because what work and learn, oh, and I just jump in here and Reagan will send this out too, um, that we're, the Indiana Chamber is gonna do a deep dive on work and learn Indiana and the EARN program, which I'm just gonna do a high level overview of on February 8th at one o'clock and we will send out that registration link to you. Ooh, 
I don't know why that went so slowly that time. It was a really weird transition. I must have pushed a weird button when I was working on that one. So, um, and this is just a, an example of like when I was talking about one posting many schools, like all these, the all that are highlighted have had students participate in the Summer Connect program. So they came in through Work and Learn and they participated. So it's a great way to get students looped into the South Bend, South Bend region opportunities. And the other piece, which um, Sally from the chamber will go in deeper on is the EARN program. So this is where I was talking about um, the potential for some funding to help pay for your interns. Um, the EARN program, Employment Aid Readiness Network, which does not roll off the tongue, but it is what it is, um, is a part of, the, it's a program of the Indiana Commission for Higher Ed, but you access it through Work and Learn Indiana. So at a high level, you, you set up your account, you post your internship, it's approved for EARN. You click a button that says, I want it to be EARN. And then if you hire a student on any type of Indiana financial aid, you can get up to 50% of their hourly wage reimbursed to you. That is the super high level on this. Sally will do a deeper dive and walk you through and help you set up your accounts and everything on February the 8th. But it's a really excellent tool. And early on, when um, the chamber back in 2014, when we started this, um, there were not many employers in our area using work, using work and learn Indiana or the earn benefit. And we saw a big leap in five years of people leveraging the earn funding, but then it tapered off. I think several things, I think COVID kind of caused it to go down, but also there was, I think a bump in customer service. And, but we need to make sure what I used to say early on was that's actually our tax money because the commission for higher ed funds these dollars. And if we're not, leveraging that and bringing it back to our region to support our talent initiatives, that's on us. We need to be making sure that we're using those resources. It can enable you to, you know, like I always say, when my husband worked at the food bank, he was able to have two interns instead of one because he leveraged the earned benefit. Um, you can also, if you're only going to have one intern and you get the earned funding, hire an earned student, you could pay a little bit more, which is great for these college students because as we all know, college is not inexpensive. And any extra money they can put in their pocket is wonderful. And it also can help you compete for that internship talent. So um, in addition, these earned dollars have been expanded for high school internship opportunities. And Kyle um, is working on the high school internship. So if you're interested in that and leveraging this, he would love to talk to you about that. So college student criteria, and again, I, I'm just going to actually skip this slide because the criteria is on their website and Sally will dig in on it. Um, and I forgot to update the FAFSA number, but it's pretty basic. Indiana resident and on any type of Indiana financial aid, and typically those students qualify for the EARN program. And now on to the more resources. And I'm trying to make this as simple as possible, but it's actually not that simple. We have a lot of resources in our community. Um, one that we partner with over the last, I don't even know, Alicia, has it been four years, three, COVID happened? I don't even know. Right. How long yeah, somewhere around. around there. Is this the third, fourth year for Lyft, I think? I think that's right. Nobody really knows. We'll just say whatever we want to say, right? So um, the Lyft program, I don't know, Alicia, would you be comfortable? Like, Do you want to explain it? Are you the expert on that? Of course. Yeah. Awesome. So. With the Lyft Network, uh, we've actually expanded into the regional internship programs. So we do accept employers who are outside of these parameters here, the data science, engineering, IT. Well, we've actually expanded into nonprofits, healthcare, as well as education now, which is super exciting. Um, kind of the benefits that you get with us are you get that tailored prospect list. I'm going to career fairs every week to recruit these students from all over the U.S., which is super exciting. Um, we do wage subsidies as well as guidance for hiring international students who might need that OPT or CPT assistance and also rolling applications. So we don't really have a deadline for applications in our program. So we also do spring and fall internships too. So if you know you decide after the summer, maybe I should have done an internship and you want to start in the fall, that's great. Please feel free to reach out to me and be happy to help you with that as well. But Kate, is there anything I'm missing you can think of? No, I think, I think what's also nice to know is that um, the, there's this funding that is not dependent on a student beyond any kind of Indiana financial aid. I When it first started, I was kind of like, so it's kind of like the, like earn Indiana, but without the same kind of parameters. And so if a kid doesn't qualify for earn, they might be able to leverage Lyft, but you can't, can you use both of them together? I had that question. I, at first we couldn't, but can we? We cannot, unfortunately. Okay. okay. 
I said I should have double checked that, but I did not before my 8.30 presentation. So now I know I need to ask my questions in advance and not do the PowerPoint at nine o'clock the night before, but you know. <laughs> so um, the other program that um, is new this year for our community is called the Extern Program, which is a partnership between the IT sector partnership and TechPoint. This is one that is um, being funded by a family foundation for, for this year. It's kind of a pilot. And they have a matchmaking service through TechPoint in Indianapolis. This is what they've done in the Indianapolis metro area for years. They're trying to expand it further across the state. So the, the cost of the program is being subsidized this year. They do some really interesting things with matchmaking. I don't know if any of you have, have signed up for Extern. If you have, put your thumb up so I would know that. Not seeing any thumbs. So this one... It, it, there's, and I always go, and I hate, I hate to give you too much information because it's overload, but the extern program is focused on tech careers, obviously, but they move more into a little, they broadened it a little bit as people kind of do. Um, they do matching and placement services. Housing is included with the fee for this one. And they do professional development and social activities, but they will be integrating with our intern Summer Connect. So the externs will be included um, with all of our other interns in the Summer Connect program. So if you need more um, information on that, I can connect you with the people at the IT sector partnership. So one thing that we're really excited about that is one of those, um, we start when we started with 70 interns in 2014, we heard employers say, um, housing has, had been a challenge. You can sublet, but it's kind of hard if you're not from here, how does it work? Um, and since that time, we've been really lucky to have our universities come on board to provide housing for interns that are here in the summertime. So IUSB and St. Mary's, uh, I believe both of their um, both of their registration forms are now up and linked on our Summer Connect landing page. So you can find those there. Really reasonable prices for housing. Um, they do have parameters, obviously, on when students can start living there and end because they have students leaving and coming in on the other end. So that makes it a little bit of a trick sometimes, but we're really excited. And it's also just another way for the students to get to know each other outside of the organized events. So we really encourage them to you know, spend time together and kind of see what that looks like. And we're excited to have even more housing at IU South Bend this year. There's more capacity and St. Mary's College. And really exciting times on those campuses too, because during the summer, they also offer like um, summer camps for other students. So you get a really nice energy on campuses in the summertime. I don't know if any of you ever went to summer school when you were in college, but I did. And I was like, to me, that was like the best time to be on campus. The vibe was just different. So um, a great opportunity for young people to connect with each other. So Summer Connect 2023, just a little bit, of, a few data points on the post summer survey that we put out. Um, we got really great feedback this year. I will tell you that it actually went up, which was exciting. Um, I think COVID doing things virtually and it making it a little weird, our numbers went down, but we are back up to 94% um, of respondents reported gaining skills they expect to use. And then also they really feel like this is 85% believe that the Summer Connect program positively influenced their perception of the area and their interest in possibly staying here. So we're excited to see this is working. And this is a data reflects 51 interns uh, who responded to the survey. Because as you know, again, we cannot make anybody complete surveys, even though we would like to try. We've even tried bribery. It doesn't actually work. So Summer Connect, this is kind of the centerpiece of intern summer, um, the intern South Bend region program. We have been doing Summer Connect. This will be our 11th summer. And um, Reagan is going to be working hard on the calendar. I don't know if there's any update you want to give on calendar, like where we are. Yeah, so we're looking forward to resume review. I think Kate mentioned this in our in-person meeting, but that's been the most popular event that we have. Um, there's going to be East Race Raffing, hopefully a financial uh, readiness class as well. Um, so we're super excited about that. And I know that your interns are going to have a great time and hopefully learn a lot while they're doing Summer Connect. We've done, um, thank you, Reagan, appreciate that. And they will get a weekly email for these community connection points. So not every student can make it to like a lunch and we try to vary the time so that things work. Um, 
I know it's not always going to work because they're obviously interning, so they're working. But if you can make it work for them to come to lunches, we do a, a couple that are at the end of the day, and we do a resume review we've done in the morning. And I think we typically try to do a couple in the morning, a couple at the end of the day, and then lunch programs. We keep the, the price low, um, $5 for the lunches. And um, South and Cubs game is the most expensive, but you're on the rooftop and you get like a buffet for dinner. So it's pretty awesome for $15. Um, and then the East Race rafting is also always a, a big hit for the interns who come. I'm trying to think of other programs. So, um, and if any of you um, are interested in being part of the resume review squad on the day that we do resume reviews, we would love to um, have you participate in that. Just let us know. Um, so we'll yeah, start if you early could send June. me an email, that'd be great. What was that? Oh yeah. If you're interested in being a resume reviewer, go ahead and send me an email and that would be great. Right. So, um, yeah, that series, the, the entire calendar will probably, um, I see a note for Macy. I'm hoping to have this whole calendar of events done by mid May. Sometimes there's a couple that still are like not quite specific, but we should have dates set and location. So we're working on that right now. You know how it is, sometimes it's tricky to get the things um, all locked down because nobody knows their plans yet. But um, we're going to we work on getting that done and we will do that. And so for, for the registering your interns, the links are out there so you can register your interns. We encourage you to also have the interns fill out <clears throat> their own self-registration because we ask questions about like their hometown, their major, their expected graduation year that you may not have. And it's a good assignment for them to go ahead and sign themselves up but you can sign up too and we'll send you emails about what events are going on so you can kind of nudge them to participate. And we would appreciate any nudging that you can do. And if you ever want to come to a program, managers are welcome to um, join in and be a part of those programs. I think, you know, I learn something new every time. Like, and and it's really great to even hear the, the young perspective and the questions they ask. The financial literacy was one example. Um, we do one... We've done one the last three years on ACE Interface, which is Adverse Childhood Experiences, kind of the social emotional piece that we do. And though um, the students have always had really thoughtful questions, just learning a little bit about um, working with other people who have come from a different experience than you, which I think is really helpful. Well, there's just a couple of quotes from those who have um, participated in the program. We really do get consistent positive feedback. There are always I would say every year there's always been one intern, typically just one, sometimes two, that just do not enjoy being part of things like this. And you can just tell, but you know, we own that and we listen to what they say and try to make it really inclusive and ensure that um, there's something kind of for everybody to participate in and really encourage the interns to participate. One thing we have found is when they come in pairs, they're more likely to come regularly and it gives them a little more confidence, but they do then also interact with, they don't just stick together, they interact with other people, but somehow walking in the door is more comfortable. So if you have more than one intern and you can encourage them to come together, I think that kind of reinforces their interest in being there because it's like social from the get-go if there's two of them coming together. So um, that's just something else to encourage if you have more than one intern. So here's, we'll, we'll send this PowerPoint out. I think I saw Reagan put that in the chat. And then along with the link to sign up for the Intern 102, if you're interested in the deep dive on Work and Learn Indiana and EARN. So open to any questions that you have. Happy to entertain those. And um, so is there any questions? Any questions? Or words of advice from people who are seasoned um, intern hosts? Madeline? I see your hands up. Uh, I'm just here to say Kate did not pay me to be on this call. She didn't even ask me to be on this call. Um, but I was fortunate to be part of this program back when it launched in 2014, 2013. Yeah, um, and I received, I, I made such great relationships, um, not only with other interns, um, but within the business community and all different industries um, because of this program. And I stayed in this area because I was so engaged um, in the South Bend uh, region. So I just wanted to thank Kate um, for launching this program and it is really valuable to intern. So, and I think quite a few people from when I was an intern, they stayed in the region too, if not South Bend. So that's and I'm so happy Madeline's here. And I, I thank you for that so much. And I like the chamber really kind of took a leap 
all those years ago. I mean, literally, like I, I worked in healthcare and I worked at a bank and um, I cared about education and I cared about a lot of things. And they said, the board had been saying, we need to do something about young people. And they basically just said, well, let's see what we can do and if we can work on internships. And they really, um, the chamber invested in this and and made it happen. And I think it's it's built into something really powerful. And Madeline's a perfect example of that. And I think, I would say, I don't know if it's because I know a lot of the young people that I feel like they're staying or, but I, I see former interns. I, school board meeting Monday night, one of the former interns was there like, working here locally now and making a difference in our community. And it's been really, it's just amazing to see how that connection grows. And especially, I mean, it's great to have local students stay. And it's also great to have kids who have come from somewhere else who would never have gotten to know the community without that internship opportunity. Even if they come for school, it's a different kind of getting to know the community. So you as employers make a huge difference in setting the stage for more young people to stay here. So I appreciate your engagement in this work. So any other questions? If not, we will send out all the information. So um, you can reach out to any of us and ask questions. If you um, have any questions about Summer Connect and things like that, Reagan can help you. Kyle is, would be happy to talk to any of you about high school work-based learning. Um, and we appreciate you being here and look forward to seeing what the summer holds. Thank you so much.